Wouldn't it be cool if you could use your smartphone as a microscope? A group of scientists figured out how to turn your phone into not just a plain old microscope, but a microscope capable of imaging fluorescence. What's more, it cost under $50 using parts ordered from Amazon. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to Science Is You. Our mission is to spread awareness of biotechnology and make real research accessible and fun for everyone. To help us do this, please subscribe and spread the word. Thanks for watching. Fluorescence microscopy is a way to view biological specimens in more detail. Here's how it works. Some special proteins or molecules have a fascinating ability. When you shine light of one color on them, say green light, they start glowing or fluorescing light of another color, like red. This property enables researchers to see structures within specimens like cells or animals that wouldn't otherwise be visible, or track the location of a protein within a cell by tagging it with a fluorescent molecule. But fluorescence microscopy has its downsides. This type of microscopy historically has needed special, costly light sources like lasers and fancy setups to filter and image the light. This excludes much of the general public in classrooms from accessing this amazing form of research. But this group of scientists wanted to change that. In this paper, they describe how they turned regular smartphones into fluorescent microscopes for under $50 each using simple parts ordered from Amazon. Here's how they did it. Although microscopes in the lab look really fancy and complicated, the main idea behind how they work is pretty simple. We want to make something look bigger. To do this, we need a few things. First, if the sample is shaking around, it will be really hard to view, obviously. So we need a stable platform to hold whatever we're looking at in place. The researchers here built a simple platform out of plexiglass by attaching it to a small piece of plywood. Why plexiglass? Another thing we need to see our sample is light, of course. But for viewing samples at a much higher magnification than we're used to, we need a lot of light shined through the sample. Here, that light was provided by a simple work light placed under the specimen. Next, we need some way of viewing and taking pictures of our sample at a higher magnification. Here, the scientists wanted to use their smartphone. But a regular smartphone camera isn't really made to take pictures at microscope level scales, at least not yet. In a traditional microscope, magnification is achieved by using an objective lens that focuses the light. Here, the researchers used a clip-on macro lens purchased from Amazon that increased the magnification of their smartphone camera about fivefold. Using this setup, they were able to view features of zebrafish, a tiny fish smaller than a pencil eraser that is often used in research. They determined that the resolution of this DIY microscope, or basically the smallest size they could clearly see with it, was about 10 micrometers. For an idea of scale, this is around the size of a white blood cell. The smallest thing we can generally see with our own eyes without a microscope is around a tenth of a millimeter. That's great, but what about turning this into a fluorescence microscope? For fluorescence microscopy, we need light of different colors. It obviously isn't practical or safe to put a big expensive laser right under your smartphone. So the scientists here came up with an alternative. LEDs are a small, practical, and cheap way of getting light in different colors. These LEDs are really intended for outdoor activities like hunting and fishing, but apparently they can also be used to outfit a smartphone microscope set up with fluorescence capabilities. Here's how. They got an LED capable of emitting light of different colors and placed that under their sample instead of the regular white light. But they wanted to make this fluorescent setup a bit better. As mentioned earlier, light of a specific color or wavelength, when shined on a fluorescent protein, causes it to begin glowing or emitting light of a different color or wavelength. But when we are viewing a sample that is illuminated with green light, for example, and the sample is glowing, say, red, it's going to be harder to see the red glowing sample if all the green light is also shining into the camera. So to fix this, we can put a filter between the sample and the camera that only lets red light through. This way, we are only looking at the red glowing sample and not any of the green light. This filter is called an emission filter because it filters the light emitted from the sample. Likewise, although in this example we are using green light to illuminate the sample, all of the light that reaches the sample might not be pure green. To make sure we are putting as much green light only as possible on our sample, we can use another filter between the light source and our sample that lets only the green light through. This filter is called an excitation filter because it filters the light that is used to illuminate or excite the sample. It's called excitation because at the atomic level, the molecules are being given energy in the form of light. But how can we make filters for a smartphone microscope? 
Here, the researchers got even more creative and used filters intended for stage lighting. They played around with different color filter combinations until they found ones that worked best to view zebrafish that contained cells that made fluorescent proteins. They tested this setup on the zebrafish that contained cells with different colors of fluorescent proteins. In addition to using green light to excite fluorophores to glow red, they also looked at zebrafish that glowed in green that were illuminated by blue light. They found that this setup worked surprisingly well to view the fluorescing sections of the zebrafish and could identify heart, spinal cord, and more in the fish. They named this smartphone fluorescence microscope setup a glow scope. To further test the abilities of their glow scopes, they performed a simple experiment. They used the glow scope to record videos of heartbeat in zebrafish and compared it before and after treatment with a drug called astimazole, which used to be used as an antihistamine but got pulled off the market due to causing serious cardiac arrhythmias. They found that they could indeed observe and count heartbeats per minute using their glow scope, but to push the limits of their design, they tried to separately look at the contractility rates of the atrium and ventricle heart chambers separately. They couldn't view these tiny structures of the zebrafish heart using just their smartphone, but they transferred the videos over to a computer and analyzed the images with the free downloadable software ImageJ, which is also known as Fiji. On the computer, they were able to zoom in on small regions of interest and use the ability of the Fiji software to detect edges in an image. This way, they were able to separate clearly the motion of the chambers within the zebrafish heart. This was super cool and showed that there's a lot that can be done with these glow scopes. This setup was really versatile and can be used to look at a variety of specimens, including paramecia. Even if the sample isn't transparent like the very thin zebrafish or paramecia, things like tadpoles and insects could still be viewed, but it worked better if the light was shining directly on the sample from above instead of from below. They played around a bit more with the lighting for non-fluorescent specimens and found that using a simple USB-powered strip light with an adhesive backing, usually used for household cabinet or closet lighting, was a great option for illuminating the sample because it could be easily attached on the plexiglass above or beneath the sample. Even better, it didn't matter what kind of smartphone you used. The system worked with a variety of different makes and models, but even cooler than turning your smartphone into a fluorescence microscope was that the cost was much lower than you might expect. Pretty much all of the parts and accessories they got to do this weren't science specific and used generally for other applications like stage lighting filters and simple LEDs, most if not all of which could be purchased on Amazon. They calculated a total cost per unit of $30 to $50 each. Not including the smartphone obviously, but still even with the smartphone the cost would be much much less than purchasing even the simplest epifluorescent microscope on the market. They envisioned these glow scopes being used in the classroom to enhance K-12 through hands-on learning activities, for example. Although with this setup as it is, we wouldn't yet be able to observe very small and complex features like the inner structure of cells, these glow scopes could still enable students, and adults, to do real research activities with fluorescence microscopy. These setups are also safer than traditional fluorescence microscopes, which use strong lasers. Although the authors here caution that you shouldn't shine the LEDs directly in your eyes, obviously, as blue light especially can cause eye damage. What do you think about glow scopes? Have you ever tried to view anything microscopic with your smartphone? Share in the comments. If you're interested in learning more about glow scopes and maybe even want to try out making one, check out the resources linked below. Science is You is a new and growing channel dedicated to helping make real biotechnology research available, accessible, and fun for everyone. Please subscribe to help out our mission and remember.